because honestly, I'm a real ass nigga. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hawa Bunga. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that button below, okay babe? In today's video, we are going to do this soft glam, this fall soft glam look. You see? You see? see? And we're going to basically have a little chit chat, a little girl chat. Um, have a few topics we I want to talk about. Um, I want to get y'all opinion on. I got some stuff on my chest. So without further ado, let's get into this video and let's chat a bit. Let's get into it. Um, so we're just going to do a little chit chat while I do my makeup. Um, I'm really not going to talk about the products I'm putting on, but I'll link it down below if you want to know. I am actually, <laughs> I'm trying to recreate this look over here because I did this look last week and I got so many comments and um, on Instagram and in person. If you're not following me on Instagram, sis, what are you doing? Go ahead and follow me. Here's my page. Um, but we're just going to hop right into it. I already did my eyebrows, which aren't even freaking related, but it's okay. We'll be alright. We'll get it done. Um, and we're just going to hop right into the topics that I want to talk about and right into my makeup. I also already prepped my eyes for my eyeshadow, so we're going to do that as well. And right now we're in my room. I'm not even in my, where I usually film at because we chit chat and we in my room. This is what I do, you know, with my friends. I'm going to do my eyeshadow. I'm going to use this little Morphe palette and I'm going to go in with these orange colors and then this brown or whatever for my eyes so basically the first thing and my mirror is right here so if y'all see me looking this way that's why um the first thing i want to kind of talk about is oh i can use this mirror too um sorry if it's in the frame but we just chit chat and you know it's cool um the first thing i really want to talk about is femininity so I see a lot of, I've been watching a lot of videos of people talk about femininity and like what is it, like the definition of it and things like that. And I was watching um, these videos and I started to like question myself, like, well, am I feminine? Like based on like these criteria that these ladies had on their, um, on their channels and oh you gotta dress up and you gotta wear makeup and you gotta do this and you have to wear perfume and all of this criteria right but then i came across my my friend um kayla cakes if y'all don't follow her y'all should uh she was also talking about uh femininity on her channel recently and she was basically saying that uh, it depends on your definition of femininity and what you think. Of course, you know, there's the main, like, you can't just take the whole word and change it or whatever. But it's kind of like if I had a piece of clothing item. It's a clothing item, say a belt. But I changed the belt and wore it as a headband. Yes, it's still a clothing item, but did I wear it as a belt? No, I switched it up and wore it as a headband and i kind of like get it like it's what you think of it and what you feel of it and your definition of femininity because it was like you have to be this and you have to dress this way you have to be girly and stuff i was a tomboy growing up but like, i did not like wearing dresses at some point i remember saying i'm never gonna wear uh makeup i'm never gonna get my eyebrows done i'm never wearing heels and that's just how i felt like i would go shopping and the and old navy with my mom inside the uh the boy section and i'll get baggy t baggy um sweatpants and jeans and wear a t-shirt and i'm not i'm not gay or anything and even if you are gay and you're a female i don't think that you have to wear a dress or you have to uh do these things to be feminine like i feel like femininity is the way you carry yourself and how you feel in the inside and stuff. It has nothing to do with how you dress or wearing makeup or wearing perfume. I just feel like it's how you take care of yourself, how you take care of yourself on the inside, how you carry yourself and how others um, perceive you when you know when you interact with certain people, if that makes sense. I don't know, what do y'all think? Like what's your definition of femininity? 
And, um, like, do you, like, feel like you're feminine or do you think you're masculine? Because, honestly, I'm a real-ass nigga. <laughs> I am a real-ass nigga. So, I definitely don't fit this stereotype of femininity if that's what it is. Like, I would not fit it at all. Hold on, my phone is ringing. Stuck on the toilet. My stomach was hurting. So I was stuck. So I was stuck on the toilet, and then I had to take a shower because I don't like taking a dump and then going out. Right. With shitty butt. Yeah. You know, you told her to get ready. Yeah, I told her. Sorry about that, guys. Um, that was my sister calling me. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but we are actually, I'm actually going to dinner for my sister's birthday, so I need to hurry up. I'm over here rapping and creating a video, and they're basically about to be waiting for me. So I'm kind of finished the eyes. Um, I know I was wanted to recreate that look that I did, but you know when you're not rushing, like, your makeup, like, I was getting so many comments, like, oh, your makeup look good, like, what, what happened, da, da, da. I literally took my time to do my makeup because I didn't have like I wasn't on a time crunch or anything like that so it just happened to come out good or whatever so um my sister called and I was oh let me tell y'all something um quick story time so um my account got hacked my cash app account got hacked and or compromised or whatever and I had so with cash app with me and cash app I have the little cash app card I don't know if you all like have cash app card or whatever so I have a cash app card so whenever um, people cash at me money, like if somebody owe me money or um, anything like that, anytime someone cash at me money, I leave the money on my cash app account because I use that money for little petty stuff like groceries or gas or if I want to um, get lunch at work or something like that. So I leave money on there because I use my cash app card to make those little purchases. And I was at work last week, um, you know, just working. And I keep hearing, like, I keep seeing my cash app going off. But I'm, like, kind of busy at work. So I'm not paying it any mind. I'm just like, oh, maybe someone sent money. So I finally, like, at lunchtime, take a break. And I open my phone. And I'm like, go to my cash app. And they say, it was, like, weird things. And it was, like, two things on there that said um, refund, like, like, uh, cash out was refunding me like a hundred dollars and they refunded me another hundred dollars and refunded me another hundred dollars but then I went to my balance and I know I had like three hundred and twenty dollars in there so I went to my balance and my balance was only twenty dollars so I'm like hold on I know for a fact I had um about three hundred dollars in here so I go to the transactions and I see it's all these different transactions and it's like 100 like uh $50 200 blah 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 and some of them were ret was returned like refunded and some of them wasn't like but at the end of the day $300 was gone mix these two foundations over there call cash app to open the claim well I contact the cash app like try to do a claim or whatever they're like oh request the money back I'm like you're telling me to request the money back from a scammer but it's like an automated thing and then I do all of this like uh I'm like tweeting them and stuff like that so they like tweet me back and um, we having a com conversation through dms but it's weird because most of the time it's an automatic me automatic y'all know what i'm talking about it's a computer talking to you so most of the time it's a computer talking to me and then you have to say agent to get an agent and they were like not really helping me he was like oh email this person like i'm like why can't i speak to somebody on the phone like my account was compromised like money was taken and there wasn't no chump change like 300 dollars is a lot of money and y'all just oh email i'm like y'all not even like really trying to help me y'all how come nobody's like willing to help me for real? So, uh, I also did a claim through my bank or whatever. So, you know, my bank, they, um, they give you a credit until, you know, why they do the investigation. And if you're, uh, and, they, and it takes like 10 days for them to do the investigation. And then like, if they find out, you know, you know, you were hacked or whatever it is, and you keep the money if not then they take it back but like 
the last thing I heard from Cash App was basically, there's nothing we could do about it. Like, this is cash that was taken directly out of your Cash App. We can't do anything about it. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do anything about it? Somebody stole money from me from your app. Like, how can you not do anything about it? Like, what sense does that make? So, I'm kind of scared that my bank is going to contact Cash App and they're going to be like, oh, well, she did the transactions. Like, it's legit. And, like, they're going to, like, not go through with my, like, cancel my claim or whatever. But that's, like, bullshit and it's not fair because... And they're just acting like I could just uh, request... Um, request i'm just putting a little bit more foundation request uh the money back from the person that stole from me that's like if somebody robbed the bank and they're like oh go go ask that person that robbed the bank for the money back like are you dumb are you stupid are you high actually high people are pretty smart because i'm gonna be pissed if i be completely out three hundred dollars like do y'all know like what makes people think it's okay to hack and steal from people do you know what i go through to earn money do you know what i go through to earn money and you just gonna come and steal from me like anybody that does that like i have to wake up early as shit i have to do sh i have to y'all <laughs> it's like pissing me off even thinking about it Anyways, that was my little story time. I'll keep y'all updated and posted on what happens or whatever. But <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to talk about is 2020. But I don't really want to go too deep into that because I just feel like everyone is over 2020. And we know that. Like, there's no point to keep talking about it. Like, the only thing I really want to say about it is whenever I think or I'm like, oh, it can't get any worse like there's no way it could get worse it gets worse and for me it's like it's like at some point like especially in the beginning like of the pandemic and everything that was happening or just everything else happened in general it was like i felt super bad and i would go into these like the press of states and i would just be watching the internet and watching news and just be like oh my god and it's like from a distance though it's like it's happening over there like i know it's happening it's happening over there but it's nothing happening directly to me but then you know you know along the line stuff started hitting close to home and stuff started happening directly to me or directly to people in my circle and people around me and that's when it's like then when it hits close to home it's like yo like what the hell like what in the whole like i learned from my husband he wants he likes to see the positive in everything like he don't let things get to him at all and if it does he get over it because he has this mindset like um you can't dwell over stuff like it happened it happened like move on i to get in from him i always try to like look at the positive so i'm just saying like um 2020 years is bad but it's also the um the year of vision like 2020 is the year of vision and i say that because it opened our eyes to a lot and it's things that i feel like if 2020 and things in 2020 um never if it didn't happen um we will be so we will still be blind to it and even things like you know black lives matter black lives matter and you know the awareness around it it's of course it's not where we want to be or where it needs to be but two steps closer to where we were and where we would have been where we would have been um if these events didn't happen you know you know what i'm about to wear like thing i want to talk about really quickly is like protecting your peace oh bitch you spitting in your peace this is a big thing for me because i don't know about y'all like tell me what you think about you know what i'm about to say but like whether it's a person a thing event social media something like stuff will get to you and it will take you out of character it will mess up your mood for the day and i don't know if this is everybody but this definitely happens to me 
um, where like say it's a Monday and I get on Twitter and I see something that <laughs> makes me upset like something that somebody tweet or said and then that would literally set my mood for the rest of the day like the rest of the day it would just be because I'm already irritated everything will start irritating me and the, it's, I just feel like my vibe like your aura attracts aura. like you know how they say um yourself with positivity and positive people and positive things and then or just um speak things into existence and things like that it's the same thing same thing go for negative things like if you if i start my day already in a bad mood already negative already feel negative and stuff like that that negativity negativity is just going to attract to me like a magnet so just do things to protect your peace just like sometimes i would take breaks from social media like i would just completely delete all the apps like i haven't done it recently because I'm just starting like my YouTube journey and um trying to be you know being an influencer I guess and you have to stay active and you have to have engagement things like that in order for your channel and your platform to grow but like I always used to do things where I just completely delete the apps off my phone and just disconnect because things would just get you out your mood and it would just control your life or it might even be something that you see on the internet that you want like people by like you think you're supposed to have this or you think that you're doing something right because i don't have that or how come this person is you like compare yourself to others you know what i mean even you can say you don't or you you know i feel like everybody do like or everybody has at one point like just compare themselves to other people or other lives or you just see something you'd be like dog like how come their life is so flawless and i'm over here struggling but with that i learned that people don't show they don't you don't see what they don't want you to see and that same thing i do the same thing you only gonna see what i show you or what i want you to see and that's the same thing with these celebs and these influencers and these whoever they want to show you what they want to show you but anyways besides that just protect your peace if something is disturbing your peace if someone is disturbing your peace you have to disconnect from them if it's a family member if it's a friend a boyfriend whatever it is um you have to protect it because if you don't protect it who else is me protecting my peace will be not working where I work. <laughs> not working where I work, but you know, I can't do that. Like, I can't quit my job right now. Like, right? You know, I can't do that. So, I just have to find the positivity in it. And I just have to thank God that I still even have a job. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of people right now. There's a lot of people right now that don't even have a job. So, that's how I protect my peace. Just think positive about it. And something on social media or, um, I'm just tired of shit that's going on on social media. I'm tired of people. Then I just completely log out and I mind my business. <laughs> I try not to worry about stuff that I cannot control. People I cannot control. Things I cannot control. So, yeah. That's it on that. Tell me, let me know what y'all think about protecting your peace. Or if you think it's a thing. If you think you can do it. Um, I know sometimes... You can't like it's it's easier said than done. Like it's hard to disconnect from things. It's hard to disconnect from people. It's definitely hard to disconnect from social media because like that is that is our outlet sometimes as well. So, anyways, next the next thing I want to talk about is like um anxiety, y'all. So I did not think anxiety was a thing. With, I don't know if I didn't think it was the thing with black people. I always felt like black people don't get anxiety. Black people don't have mental illnesses and shit. Like, and I know a lot of people think like that. It's like, it's ignorance. You don't know until you either educated on it or you go through it yourself, you know? Um, for me, it was a mixture of both. I started having anxiety attacks this year, like early this year. And I didn't know what it was. I was like, what the f is going on? Like, I would like, it'll be random. Sometimes it's random and sometimes I noticed something triggered it. But I didn't know what it was and how I was and why 
these things will happen to me like I will have shortness of breath and I would just be gasping for air like I literally couldn't breathe um but just feel like not feel good like I would be sweating and just like my heart will be racing and it will go on for like sometimes minutes sometimes hours or whatever and I didn't know what, that, what it was until I started looking up the symptoms just looking up the symptoms of what I was having and a lot of things that would come up were, was anxiety or anxiety attacks and stuff I'm like no nah, this ain't real like I ain't getting anxiety like I never had that in my life like no um black people don't have anxiety attacks okay like that was my thought but then it kept happening and I noticed it will happen when certain things happen in my life. I noticed the pattern and I was like, yes, it has to be anxiety attacks. But to this day, I haven't confirmed it. To this day, I haven't gone to the doctor and talked about it and got prescribed any medication or anything. I'm just trying to just deal with it my way. But I know that at some point I'm going to have to talk to my doctor about this because sometimes I literally can't sleep at night. Like, I will be up all night and then i have to go to work in the morning and i would be in a bad mood or be irritated all day and snapping on um people that i love and stuff like that because i'm tired like like what do y'all think like do you all think anxiety is real do you all think it's something that uh we should take medication for do you think we should just let it fly and it'll eventually go away. Do you think like tell me tell me y'all tell me y'all thoughts on it? Because I need help. <laughs> so I just think us in the black community in general just needs to be more aware of like mental illness and take it seriously. Like if you see a family or friend and they say or you notice things about them, like even depression, like literally help them or help them seek help because it's serious and I feel like we don't take it serious. I'm gonna miss my face. Black in here and give me like some little eyeliner or whatever. Like. Blush. The last thing I wanna do really quickly is like some random ab assumptions about me like i asked my friends or i asked my folks on instagram again if you're not following me on instagram you might want to do that like follow your girl um what what assumptions they had about me when they first met me or when they first saw me and just so that y'all could get to know me a little better a little better since i'm kind of new on youtube i'm going to read some of those assumptions and then just say if they're true or not you know just something fun just to end this video since talking about a whole bunch of serious topics um, okay so the first assumption assumption that i have is she seems cool and she's really chill but she seems closed off so that's kind of accurate uh for me i'm not i'm an aquarius shout out to my other aquarius sis, sis. okay so for me I literally have to, I'm very quiet and I'm closed off when you first meet me because I have to, I have to sit back and observe the highlight or whatever. But say um, my friend bring me around a new friend or something like that, I literally have to sit back and, oh gosh, you have to sit back and um, fill you out first before I basically entertain you at all. I'm, I want to be careful of who I let in my circle or let around me because my, because my vibe, my vibe changes based on your vibe or based off of people that I'm around. So, and also like just to be careful in general because there's some people that literally do not have good intentions for you or for anything there's literally people that will talk shit about their friends and you're like i'm not about to say shit around you because if you talking shit about your friends then you're not somebody that i want to really associate myself with whatever so yes i am standoffish it's quiet same thing i am quiet until you get to know me and i'm quiet around certain people like at work they would probably think i'm quiet because 
I stay to myself. I stay in my zone. I'm a very private person and I try to protect my peace as much as possible. So if I stay quiet and I stick to myself and I don't talk because I feel like when I do talk, I get myself in trouble. So I just shut the fuck up and I don't say anything and everybody will be cool. Everything will be good. Okay. She's a dick. Hmm. Am I a dick? Maybe. I don't feel like I'm a dick just because. Like, if you if you first... You really think I'm a dick? If you first met me and you think I'm a dick, I probably was already in a bad mood. Or I have a resting bitch face. So, when you meet me, you'll probably think I'm mean off bucks. But I'm really not mean. I'm really nice and goofy and outgoing. And... I have a love-hate relationship with people, but the people that I'm with, I f*** them, and they know it. I do not have that many friends, and I just don't. I don't have that many friends. My circle is so small. There's some more, but I have to go. <laughs> I have to go. Um, I'll probably do another real, a whole video of assumptions. I just threw on some brown lip gloss or whatever. And this is my little soft, my fall soft glam look. And then my edges or whatever. She cute or whatever. <laughs> I hope you all answer some of my questions below. Let me know if you all enjoyed this video. Give me a big thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Enjoy the Bunga Gang. And I, I'll catch y'all in my next video. Bye.